Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. This video is a premiere of the finished Opulent Plunge, which is a pattern of mine that I've been working on diligently the last month or so. It is finally live on Ravelry. I'll be posting it to other sites um, that are more accessible to other people around the world soon, but I wanted to make this video to announce the publication of this new pattern. I am currently wearing it now, and coincidentally, coincidentally, I did the exact same thing that I have said many times before I accidentally do, which is I peel off my knit bras and I accidentally throw them into the laundry. And when they're in the laundry, they get put in the machine. And right now I'm wearing my finished opulent plunge while wet. I tried blow drying it dry, but this is how it appears straight out of the wash, still wet, because <laughs> I wanted to make this video today. And I wanted to share with you some of the details about this pattern. Announce that we are doing a knit along that begins August 9th. That's this Monday. And that will only be a 10 day long knit along. So it's a challenge for you to um, pick up this pattern if, if you're not one of my testers and um, work together on this. So if you have any questions at all, you can engage in the forum where um, we will be hosting that on Ravelry. If Ravelry is not accessible to you, you can DM me or you can comment in this video down below. And that way there's still a little bit of a community element. So if there's other viewers in the comments also knitting the Opulent Plunge, you can list your questions there. And any one of us, myself included, can answer any of the questions that you have. So that along is again going on August 9th through the 19th. There will be prizes. I am giving three lucky winners uh, a single pattern of their choosing from Ravelry up to a $10 value. So if you're interested in perhaps winning a little prize, can you see Star Baby? Hey! She loves when we record videos. She always needs to be involved. <laughs> um, but if you want to participate in the knit along, I will leave links below to the Ravelry forum where there is room for chatter and then the finished object forum where you definitely want to post to be eligible to win. So I wanted to share with you not just the details of this pattern and the making of it, but each of the versions throughout so that if you want to modify your version of the opulent plunge, you know exactly how to go about doing that. And you can kind of get to know the pattern and its details um, so that you understand exactly how easy this design is to modify according to your unique needs. Now, I will say she's just pawing at me right now. <laughs> I will say that it's challenging to design a knit bra that's going to accommodate everybody. You have ribs <laughs> and then you have a bust. And so I designed this pattern to be one you can kind of, can can kind of accommodate both in a sense because my experience is and I wear a lot of knit bras and I've been wearing them for a while now. They tend to blow out in the the band here around the chest and then eventually it kind of just becomes what I casually call a titty bib, <laughs> um, where it just kind of like sits over the body. And I started with designing something that uh, after execution turned out to be different proportions than I anticipated. So I made this tank top, which I've talked about in many of my previous videos. If I were to grade this design as written, it would be a little more complicated than the finished pattern turned out to be uh, because of the way the motif repeats. Now, I um, then graduated to a different idea of making just a bra and not so much of a tank top because although I like tank tops, I like my tanks to be loose and casual, something that kind of layer over a bra. And this bust was just too big, so it didn't really um, fit the vision I had for this motif here kind of fitting over the bust. That was sort of the intention. And although I love this design, I wanted to recreate it with that sort of intention executed. I wanted to make a bra that just had that motif over the cup. And so I redesigned it to this, and this was version one. And I, knitting the smallest size, had the same issue with it that many of my testers did. And that is that the cups, if they didn't provide enough coverage, which we fixed in the cup sizing portion of the pattern, um, whether the cups fit or not, all of us had a little bit of an issue with our bust kind of spilling 
through the front. <laughs> and I can say that about, um, well, this is after being washed and worn and worn and worn and worn and washed and worn and worn and worn. It just stretched out to the max. And I don't even really wear this version anymore because it just doesn't support me enough. I think one thing I'll do to make this garment functional so that I can continue to wear it is just maybe um, stitch it together a tiny bit in the front with just a little bit of string and just looping it around and tying it off in a knot. Um, the straps also stretched out way bigger than anticipated, so I might tie or graft the straps together in a little bit of a racer back look to make this functional again, because I don't want to waste all the time and effort and, and yardage put into this garment if I'm going to keep it at all. Um, I might also give it to someone who maybe is a little bit bigger than me because it did stretch out. So when I was making my second with a modification, I went down a needle size because some of my testers did mention going down a needle size and I thought, well, I would love to know exactly what difference that makes in the fit because one, that could be all the difference I need in the front or it's not enough of a improvement in the fit um, to just change that element to it. So in retrospect, I wish I just changed one thing at a time. But, you know, I can only make so many of these <laughs> and I've made, uh, this is the second. So, uh, and I have a, the third, that's the final. But I knit a version of the original with a keyhole loop. I love the look of this and honestly the fit is even better. It really holds everything in and together. <laughs> um, at the same time, it's not a plunge bra with that cross. It's it's a bra bra. It's not a plunge. So I loved the way that that made everything better, but at the same time, it took away that element of a plunge. And so I made a third version of this pattern with that intention of bringing the plunge back in. And um, I executed that in the third and final. So you might be able to tell that there is the splitting of the front, but then it crosses over very close to that split. And there is a, another version of this pattern I still haven't even knit that's written into the final edit as a modification if you like. And I'm planning to knit this version of the bra in the knit along along with all of you. So what it is, is this cross here, which is in the pattern, it's written in the pattern to do that little extra loop. What that does is it gives a few extra rows where you're connected at the front. So it does cinch in the front bust a little bit more than the very original pattern did, which if you're following the hashtag opulent plunge right now, as of August 8th, um, 2021, you'll see the very original version in a lot of the photographs and it fits some people. Um, other people had that issue with spilling through the front and that might be because of the gauge, it might be because of the actual design, but I wanted to give a little bit of a buffer so that even if your gauge is off slightly or your bust size is just a different size, then it'll still fit everyone. And so I incorporated that, but then the additional modification written into the pattern, if you choose, is to implement that keyhole crossover again after the decreases as I did in the first version. So it'll give you a little bit of a second thing there and it'll be more like a bra bra and less of a plunge bra. So I wanted to share with you all the final edit of this design. Of course, it's in the photography of the pattern. Once again, I'll leave links below to the details of that knit along. Please do participate if you can. If not, I totally understand. There's no pressure here, but I wanted to make that announcement and say hello to you all this week. I've been doing a lot of work in the garden. I might add to the end of this video a little bit of a clip so you can kind of get a weekly update on how things are going. But I just want to thank you all so much for being here and watching, subscribing, and liking this video if you happen to like this video. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and that you take care. This is the last bouquet that the Black Eyed Susans will make an appearance. And I'm gonna show you guys the garden. I carried that giant $12 watermelon home from the market the other day. <laughs> and I ran out of room for anything else, which is kind of funny. Anyway, here is the garden. She's gonna come out and join us. 
and I cleared out this little bit of space here. Uh, we had Black Eyed Susans growing here and they were a little overgrown and a bit spent. I do save the blooms for bees to kind of forage from way over there in that back corner. And then later on, just before the fall, maybe beginning of fall, I will shred all my sticks. So those go into the compost bin. But here we have some itty bitty seedlings. We have cilantro. I have more zinnia seedlings here and they get a lot of shade, but a little bit of sun in the earlier morning. So I hope that they might do well and hopefully spring up almost as big as these ones. The um, mystery squash plant is sliving. Um, we have cucumbers galore. In fact, every week we juice about five giant cucumbers and have a few glasses of cucumber juice on Mondays. Um, but we have itty bitty basil seedlings planted way down there. The basil plants are thriving in this shaded area. And I cleared out the raspberries. So you can tell that they are much less dense and I've tied them where I don't have stakes up. I've tied them directly to the fence with some hand spun wool. Um, and I intend to do that with some more against the back so that we can kind of maximize the sun exposure there. And I do try to pop little plants in the front as if they might thrive, but I can tell already from the spring, these plants, they just didn't get enough sun, but that's when there was a lot more to shade them. So I hope that those seedlings, these are um, painted daisy seedlings. I hope that they might do well. Um, we have, you know, everything that's been growing. If you've been watching my channel the last few weeks, nothing new in the back there, but I did put some seedlings out hoping that they might do better outside where it's nice and warm than in the basement. And uh, I put my nasturtiums out, so we'll see how they do. These boxes, they're not the best for growing in. I don't think they get enough sun. I don't know if they had enough water or nutrients, but I did fertilize them, hoping that that might make all the difference. So this is a brief little garden tour. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.